Hi everyone. So you're probably a little bit confused as to why this video is seemingly being re-uploaded despite it being released, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. Now, a few things have come to light and knowing that I had to re-upload this video anyway and add something on the front of it, I thought I would kill two birds with one stone today. I'm a little bit croaky, it's about seven in the morning, so please excuse my voice right now. So first things first, this video is a re-upload of an old video question is why. If you literally don't care what I have to say and you don't want to hear the reasons for the re-upload or anything to do with what I'm about to say, please feel free to skip ahead to the video. You don't have to watch it if you've already seen it. It would mean the world to me if you did because I do have lost revenue from it, from it not being available to watch, but it is entirely up to you. You can simply skip out now if you like. If you're still listening, the first thing I want to talk about is the reason this video has not been available to watch. The owner of the Mint Adansonii photograph featured in this video claimed my video for copyright. They did this because I used their photograph without permission, which I do often do on this channel. I'm going to sit here and say it. Now, the reason I do do that and the reason that the video has been reinstated is because content such as that is actually covered by something called fair use. I do believe in the US it's called fair use and in the UK and possibly other places it's actually called fair dealings, but it's essentially the same thing. This law basically means that I am able to use images without permission of the content owner as long as I do so in compliance with fair use. So for example, for the purpose of satire, for the purpose of commentary, for the purpose of critique, I am allowed to do so, and I am legally allowed to do so. Now, I know that's going to piss a lot of people off. I've always known it. It's been something that people have come at me for, for honestly, quite a long time. I, I wouldn't say that's anything new, but I need you to know that I'm legally able to do this. So to give a little bit more context, the owner of the Mint Adansonia image claimed that I had committed, you know, copyright theft or something along those lines. You're seeing this video because one, YouTube disagreed with that and two, the, the applicant, the person who owns that photograph failed to actually take any action on that. So for example, court action against me. Therefore, my video is reinstated. Now, I have to be super serious about this, guys, because I am acting in accordance with the law. And in future, if anybody decides to do this again, I will not hesitate to sue for loss of earnings because it is my legal right to do so. I'm not meaning to sound super threatening. It is literally just that's the way it is. And honestly, I feel like myself and, and other plant YouTubers really have, have kind of suffered from this for a long time. I know a lot of other plant YouTubers are scared to post you know, photographs for fear of, you know, backlash from the internet and stuff like that. But I'm here to tell you that it's it's perfectly fine to do as long as you are obviously following fair use guidelines and you're not claiming it as, you know, something else and using more of it than what you need to, then you are safe to do so. So that's just a little message out there. If this happens to me again, I will sue the person responsible for a loss of earnings because it is a fraudulent claim. Not only that, but if I do decide to take action against the person responsible, not only would I very likely win the case, but the person responsible may also be responsible for my legal fees on top of this. So it's not a game. It's not funny. And I am willing to go to court over it because quite frankly, on this channel, I'm sick to death of being pulled apart for stuff that I don't need to be pulled apart of. So that's just a word I want to say about that. And I'm not trying to be threatening. Again, I'm just trying to be super serious and tell you that that is the law. It has been there for some time. Okay. So that's all I want to say on that. That is why the video was down. That is why it is, well, it was just going to go back up on its own. But due to the second thing I want to talk to you about today, I'm re-uploading it with this on the front of it because I think it's super important. Okay, so there's the first thing I wanted to mention. Now, the second thing, I wasn't going to talk about this, but as I mentioned, this is kind of a two birds with one stone deal because it just so happens that the content in this video is very, very relevant to recent events. I also didn't want anyone to think that I took this video down to, I don't know, remove evidence of something I'd said, so... So it has come to my attention that I've been accused of, I think the word was spreading a hate campaign against a specific plant. That specific plant is, as it happens, the Monstera adansonii mint. I've been accused of basically falsely 
spreading rumors that it's viral and pushing the narrative that it's viral in attempt to devalue the plant. I believe the reason given was because I couldn't buy it, I think, if I'm correct on that. I'm not going to spend too long on this because honestly, I'm still a bit bewildered. I don't feel I need to spend too long on it, but I want you to hear this from me. I don't think this is drama. I actually take this very, very seriously because somebody is essentially accusing me of being very dishonest on this channel and pushing a narrative and manipulating my audience. And I take that so seriously because I pride this channel on honesty and I pride this channel on giving you enough information to make your own opinions or do your own research. So if anything I'm about to say is wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments. But... I'm pretty sure that I've only ever mentioned this plant in the, we'll call it two years since it was ever debuted on the internet. I'm pretty sure I've only mentioned this plant three times in two years on this channel. And I think when it comes to the first video, I'm not really sure I voice too much of an opinion, but these are the three videos where I mention this plant. And I've included timestamps as to basically what I say and when, essentially. The first video would be the first documentary episode where I think that's one of the first times I'd really seen the plant. I didn't tell you what my opinion was. It was voiced along with Ben's in that video. The next video, I actually had to look it up this morning because I couldn't remember what it was, but I'm pretty sure it was late 2020. It was an overhyped houseplant video. Now in this video, I mentioned this plant as part of a umbrella term for anything mint when I talked about overhyped plants essentially and I broke down the different aspects of mint that I didn't like. So I used one plant for one example of what I didn't like, another plant for another example, and then mint adansonii for another example. The third time that I've mentioned adansonii mint was on the video that is basically backing onto this one, the video that I uploaded three weeks ago. And I presented my opinion and I gave evidence as to why I held the opinion that I did. Given that in the documentary I didn't really voice an opinion on the plant, I thought I would play for you the time where I did voiced my opinion on the plant, and that was in the overhyped houseplants video. And because there are a lot of rumors on what I have and haven't said on this plant, I'm now going to play you what I said about Adansonii mint. Again, the timestamp is below for you if you want the entire section where I talked about like everything mint, that's fine. But I'm going to play you what I said about Adansonii mint. For the Adansonii mint, for me, brutally honestly, every time I see a picture of one of these plants, they don't look well to me. They look like they've got some kind of issue. I know a lot of people share that opinion at the moment as well, that the plant doesn't look very healthy, and I know there is definitely some debate at the moment between people online as to whether this is actually simply a virus. When I look at photographs of these plants, more often than not, the leaf shape appears quite distorted to me on photographs, which to be honest is a huge red flag that shouldn't really happen. I would not personally take the risk on this plant because it's in the low four digit range at the minute. I wouldn't take that risk because there is no proof that it's not viral. So maybe further down the line, if it was proved to not be viral, then maybe that would be different. But even then I think the price would have to drop because I don't personally think that it's a very attractive plant. Of course, if you want to buy one of these plants or you own one of these plants, great, awesome. I'm not saying go and get them. I'm saying be careful because if you buy one of these plants in at the low four digit range and it turns out at a later date that it has a virus, your plant's not worth anything anymore. That's something you've really got to consider if you want to buy them. In my opinion, I was pretty neutral in that video. I didn't say anything to, to be fact that wasn't fact, such as when I talked about there being debate as to whether it was viral. That was a true, that was a true statement. And then anything else I expressed my opinion and I clearly stated it was my opinion. I even said it'd be cool if it was tested or something to that effect. I was very, very neutral about it back then. The overhyped houseplants video, I did get some backlash for giving my opinion on that plant. I got direct backlash for that, so much so that on the next overhyped video, I had to put a disclaimer on the front of it, reinforcing that anything given in those videos is my opinion, unless otherwise stated. And it was no hate to anyone that owned those plants or wanted to own those plants. I wouldn't say that was a hate campaign, personally. 
Now, there was a tone shift towards this video that is obviously, again, backing onto this one where I was a little bit more uncensored, and I think I even made a comment to that effect. I held the opinion that I did about that plant in this video due to information, direct evidence that I was supplied with by Ben, as it happens. It was a conversation anyway. You can see this in the video. I'm not going to go into it now because there's no point because it's in the video and it's discussed. So if you want to see that, then please check the description and all of it will be in there. I don't feel that I've led any kind of hate campaign given that I've done, to my knowledge, again, if you find other timestamps in other videos where I've, you know, slated this plant, then feel free to leave them down below. Feel free to correct me on it. But to my knowledge, I can honestly sit here and say that I've mentioned this plant less than a handful of times on this channel in the past two years. I've only given my opinion and clearly stated it as my opinion at points. So very recently the plant was tested and it was discovered that the plant doesn't have, I can't remember what virus it was, it was tested for. I think it was mosaic and potty virus. It doesn't have those viruses. So it's been tested for that and it has come back negative. My opinion on that is simply this. I don't regret anything I've said on this channel about this plant at all because the reality is what whichever way it's gone down it's led to this plant being tested and the results being shared the only thing i will say on it is you know you don't get a special sticker from the internet for doing what you should have done two years ago when this plant was being sold for a lot of money you don't it's your due diligence as a seller to do that you should have done that I'm aware that the person distributing the plant or parties responsible or whatever you want to call it, they've said that it was always tested the full time, but that's not what I was told. And the, the screenshots are in this video. So I went off the information that I had. Um, I'm not going to give my personal opinion on that because it's, I don't need to really. Um, but you don't get a special sticker for doing something you should have done anyway. In conclusion, these are the things I've said about this plant. I don't want to tell you what I have and haven't done, really. I want to let you watch the clips and figure it out for yourself and formulate your own opinions because that's what I like to do on this channel. I don't want to say, I haven't done this, that's not how it is. I want you to make your mind up. That's why I played you these clips. I want you to have full context. In my opinion, though, I don't see how three videos in two years is a hate campaign when if you take honestly most other plants on my channel um to name a couple philodendron 69686 would be a great example variegated billetai would be another great example the amount of shade and slaughter i've thrown at those plants given that i actually own them is not even comparable to anything i've said about the mint Amazonii. So that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Apologies for taking up your time, although I really do appreciate you watching this because I did feel the need to speak on it. I wasn't going to make a dedicated video, as I said, but because it backs onto this one, because it was taken down anyway, because it was going back up, it felt like the perfect opportunity to kind of just put my side forward and reintroduce the words that I actually originally said about this plant so that you have the information from the horse's mouth. Thank you very much for your time, guys. If you'd like to watch this video, if you haven't seen it, it will now play for you. If you have already seen this video, you do not need to watch it. I am trying to recoup some earnings lost through this process, so it is entirely up to you if you'd like to watch it. I won't be offended if you don't, if you've already seen it. But thank you very much for your time. And I will leave you with quite simply the video. The video, by the way, is in the same state as what it was left. I do have a copy of the original video still linked up that I can show at any point if need be. This video is not doctored from the original. I think if you have seen the original, you probably know that. There's, there's no change. It's just a re-upload. So without further ado, on with the video. They are unwilling to test this plant against viruses. The reason given for that is because they're selling so well and they are in high demand. Well, of course you're going to say that because you're making several thousand per plant. Why would you risk testing it? Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another episode of Houseplants Ranked. Now, because last week's episode went down such a treat, I actually went out and bought a green screen. So basically what that means is if I do this, 
can change the environment, which is great. I actually realised though, after I bought this, that I'm actually feeding quite far into the theory that I have a green screen behind me. So just for the intro, I thought I would do this. Do you feel at home now? I feel like a lot of people on this channel might feel at home. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So I did ask you guys on Instagram what set of plants you would like me to rank next. And it was so close between common house plants and hyped house plants. So today we're going to do hyped, as you may have seen from the title. The next one I will do will likely be common or maybe something Halloween themed. So if you've got any ideas, please leave them in the comments below. Now I will take you through the ranking and then I will explain a little bit about the plants that we have because I've taken plants based on your requests on Instagram. So we have a grid here in front of us. You will see from the sections that we have the following options. So the least good or the shittest we could say would be for the drone. Again, fans of the channel know exactly what this is. We then have let's test shipping delays, which refers to a time that I used a certain plant to test shipping delays. The next category is yes boy, which means it's a good solid option. The next category we have iconic, which means it's iconic. It doesn't necessarily mean it's expensive. It doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to care for. It might just mean that I like it a lot and I personally deem it to be iconic. And the last category, of course, is the sexually attracted category. And I mean that very seriously. So anyway, we have a selection of plants today. As I mentioned before, you guys basically put to me on Instagram and I have to tell you, some of you guys really want me to get into trouble. Do you not? I looked at some of these suggestions and I was like, oh shit. Before we start, I took a couple of really notable plants from the first episode in this series, which I will link down below because it should be in a playlist. But I took a couple of plants that were super notable from that episode that would apply to this episode, but I'm going to skim over them and I'm going to put them in place very quickly. I'm going to start with the obvious. This is the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. Now, I am going to stay true to my original category in the first video and I'm going to pop it in sexually attracted because honestly, my opinion still stands on the plant whether it's hyped or not. So for that reason, I'm going to leave it in here. Again, if you want to see my full thoughts on the plant, you can watch the first episode, but that's where I'm going to put it. So it's a nice strong start. I've got, hmm, I've got variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma that I'm going to put in the category that I also put it in the first time and that is for the drone. Again, my full reasons are listed in the previous video. Basically, I hate it. It's overhyped. No one needs to pay that much money for it because it's a product of tissue culture. Again, watch my other video, you will get the point. Yeah, I think the only other plant that I carried forward here was the Monstera Mint and I believe I popped it here in Let's Test Shipping Delays because it's not quite as bad as the hype surrounding the Raphidophora tetrasperma. It's it's just not, it's not that bad, but it is overhyped in my opinion. Again, my full opinion was expressed in the last video. I mean, I don't like mint anything and we will, we will get into that, trust me. Now, if I just check the rest of my plants, I think they're all new apart from that, so we will go Go forward with what I have. I'm going to do this one and I'm going to pop it in the middle category until I place it. So generally I'll be popping things here, but I'm going to place them. This is the Anthurium Ace of Spades. Essentially the only thing you know, amazing about it, is that it looks like the Ace of Spades. I, it's very, very dark foliage. It's still, you know, your regular Anthurium kind of shape, but it, it's, it's iconic for that reason. So the thing is... The thing is, I did a video on overhyped plants that I featured like late last year now, so nearly, it's nearly a year old actually. But I featured this plant in this video and TLDR about this plant is that although it's cool now and it's very expensive and you can't find them, I'm guessing that is why it is hyped, right? But the thing is, they were in tissue culture maybe two years ago. They stopped tissue culture production on them. A lot of these big companies that, you know, make these plants, they stopped tissue culture on them because no one wanted the plant, no one gave two shits about most Anthurium, let alone this one. So as a result, they stopped production. Now they're worth, I actually don't know what they're worth, so I'm not going to quote anybody on this video, but I'm pretty sure they're worth high triple digits. So it's really fucking hard, I'll be honest with you, for me to put that in Iconic, just because I know what I know. The only reason there isn't more of them is because TC production has stopped. 
right? And it would start if the guys in the company got the memo. <laughs> right. For me, it's going to stay in Yes Boy because I do like it. It's velvety, it's nice, it's hot, it's sexy, and it's got dark foliage. But this could very easily become more common. And I don't mean to sound like a snooty person because it's not about what's rare and what isn't, even though that's what people like to brand me as. It's more false hype about this plant because of the availability. Do you know what I mean? But the availability is down because... TCs are stopped. Given that this list is about hyped plants, I don't want to put this any higher than what it is. But as a plant itself, if you take away all of that, it's sexy. It's good. So I'm going to leave it where it is. Right. Well, what else have we got? Mm, I don't want to throw my... Honestly, you probably can't see all the plants down the bottom because I like to like keep them as a surprise or whatever. There's a couple of really nasty ones in here. So I'm going to I'm gonna wait for them a little bit. Uh, let's do this one, which a few of you requested, actually. This here, bump. This is the philodendron Dean McDowell, named after Dean McDowell, who I'm assuming is the first, you know, the person to hybridize this plant. If you don't know, this plant is a hybrid of philodendron pastazanum and philodendron gloriosum. And I, I do sell these, so I can speak with some experience here, unlike the last plant. Um, they're very hardy. They take after gloriosum an awful lot in all the right ways, I would argue. They can grow a bit gangly, but they're good. I feel like I have to rank this based on hype and whether it's worth the hype, right? Otherwise, what really is anybody going to get out of this ranking, right? Unless I really fucking hate something, in which case it doesn't matter how hyped it is. But I think for the hype and for what it gives you, I actually think, again, it probably belongs in this category. I feel like they've got hype because of the history of the McDowell, because I think recently when this plant spiked, I'm pretty sure and don't quote me on this because I could be very wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Dean McDowell passed away. So... Again, th there was interest in this plant that really spiked because of all the, the articles printed and we obviously learned more about Dean McDowell, hence this thing spiked. But in terms of living up to the hype, I think it's a beautiful plant and I think it's very easy and I think it's awesome. So I am going to leave this here because I think it's deserving of this category. This here is Syngonium scrambled eggs, which is essentially Syngonium wendlandii variegata. And honestly... This one is not so good for me because I said this in the red plant index that I actually featured it in. This is one of these plants where the variegation just ruins it. Now, maybe some higher chunks of like sectoral variegation would make it a bit nicer. This for me is just not it, guys. This, this ruins it. This is one of these examples for me where variegation just kind of ruins a plant. So for me, I would not put it here. Um, <sighs> fuck. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking like I want to move it down, but it, again, these categories are not literal. Like it doesn't literally mean that if I move this plant here, it means I'm going to chuck it in a box and actually test shipping delays. And I feel like I have to be really specific on that because a lot of people take what I say to be absolute gospel when I use a term of expression. So I'm going to put it in here because it ain't that good. It's not shit. But in my opinion, on this specific plant, the variegation ruins the appearance of the plant quite a bit. It's about the hype and if it's worth it. And for me... No, it's not actually worth the hype, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Uh, let's do this one. This here, you will not be able to tell probably by this picture, but here I'm talking about the philodendron bicolor. Very little is known about this plant, and I can tell you from first-hand experience, there are a lot of, um, misidentifications floating around on the internet. Now, by that, I don't mean this fakes. So this will become apparent in a month or so when I release a few videos of this nature, basically. But this plant is very similar to another plant called... Philodendron ruitsii, I think. Forgive me, I'm doing this blind. Um, it's very similar to that. So you may see a lot of false ones on the internet. So straight off the bat, the advice I'm going to give you is to get someone else to verify that that plant is the correct ID. And it's not necessarily the seller's fault because I, like many sellers, have bought in the philodendron re... re, re Ruitsii, Jesus, I forgot the name, under the name Bicolor. So it's not necessarily their fault. Don't assume it's their fault. And I can say that from experience within the field. Um, just verify that it is the plant that you want because the real Bicolor has a lot 
of value. Fun fact, the bicolour that I have, um, I did have two, but one died. It was sent as a replacement for quite a large order that I made that basically didn't go through with a supplier. So they sent me this plant as compensation for like a shit ton of plants. So the, the value on a true bicolour is very, very high. So honestly, if this is a plant that interests you, make sure you get somebody to identify it. There are a lot of great groups on Facebook. Drop it in there. Make sure it's a real thing before you buy it. Honestly, because there's a lot of ones that aren't correct IDs. But I don't actually think there's any hype about this plant. Someone did suggest it, but I don't think there was a lot of suggestions. So does it live up to the hype? It's kind of like meh, right? Because there isn't really any hype because people don't know what this is and they don't know how rare it is. Probably due to the misidentification that is on the internet, right? <laughs> At the risk of being a broken record, I'm going to leave it where it is because I do think it's middle run. And I think the more people that find out about this plant, this, like, this would change, right? Either one way or the other. But for now, it's in a really neutral position because people just don't fucking know or they don't care. So I'm going to leave it where it is, guys. And I think that's fair because, again, no one loves or hates it. It's kind of in the middle. So there you go. I'm not going to do the spicy ones. There's a couple of spicy ones. I'm not going to fucking do it. Okay, so let's do this one. You may not be able to tell what this is. This is not an Aroid. This is a Hoya and it is. Fuck. What is it? <laughs> Hoya Argentia Princess? I think. So basically this is a silvery Hoya. It's got a shit ton of value. I'll be honest, I haven't looked at it prior to this video, but the last time I did look it up when I was considering buying one, I think there was like one listing on the internet and it was about 600, was it 600 euros or was it 600 pounds? I'm not sure, but it was a lot of money. So we're talking high troubles, at least it was at the time. And that was when COVID was kind of kicking off. So take what I say with a pinch of salt. It may have gone up, it may have gone down, but I, again, I'm, I'm not like fully into the Hoya world, even though I absolutely love Hoya. It's like a thing for me. I'm not clued up on this. I'm not up to date with this. So I don't know how hyped it is. And again, that puts me at a disadvantage doing this. I almost feel like it's iconic, even though I know nothing about it, but I should probably keep this towards my opinion. So for me, I'm, again, I'm going to keep it where it is because I feel like I am, from my perspective, I'm neutral on it. For the Hoya world, I feel like it's probably in iconic, but I feel like this video is more based on my opinion than anything else. And believe me, that will become apparent throughout the video. So I don't want to be hypocritical. So I'm going to leave it where it is again. Oh gosh. Okay, let's go for this one because this is gross. <laughs> Spoiler alert. This here is the Syngonium Strawberry Ice and I have made literally, literally no secret of this. I do not understand why people like this. So this is a Syngonium. It doesn't quite follow the rules that I consider most Syngonium to follow. I, it grows very quickly. It propagates well. You know, it can take being underwater, all of that and be fine. I wouldn't classify this plant in that category. For me, this plant has a really fucking horrible color. So it has like a green color, but it's also kind of burgundy and it's also kind of blush pink. The photograph I have here is like, that's good variegation on that leaf there. That's actually my plant. I still hate it. It's going in there because I hate it that much. I'm not going to pretend that I don't hate it that much for the sake of not offending somebody. <laughs> it's a shit plant. It's honestly a shit plant. Mm, let's go with the classic here. Mm. Let's go with the Monstera Albo, and by that I take to mean the white variegated Monstera small form, aka Borzigiana or Borzigiana, if you know it to be that. It's the same thing. So your regular run-of-the-mill white variegated Monstera. I've seen some shit, right? And I... Mentioned this in a video around about Christmas time, the same video I talked about the overhyped plants. If you want to see it, you can find it on my channel. But I talked about this plant and I know from direct personal experience of walking through nurseries that this plant is artificially hyped. It's artificially restricted and very small quantities of this plant are released. And I am surprised by the amount of people that have tried to argue with me on that because I know what I've seen. I suspect the people that have tried to argue with me on that, I mean, usually if you go to my old comment section, you will see that they are people that own nurseries, so there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to talk myself into a box, but essentially they are kept back artificially to make you think they're rarer than they are, because I guess some guy at the top thought, you know, 
th- this is highly desirable. It would be very silly if we flooded the market. And honestly, I know a lot of you are going to hate this, but I understand that theory of mind, right? And a lot of people may argue against that, but if it was you in that situation, 90% of people would do the same fucking thing. So I don't really care what hate I get on this video for saying that, but a lot of people in that situation would do that. I'm not knocking the person keeping them back. I'm just telling you they're being kept back. And that is me not saying what the nursery is, what the company is, where the nursery is or anything. So I'm doing my bit to just not get involved, but I can tell you that it's held back. So my point is it's artificial hype because they they could be rare or uncommon, I would say, with the amount that is kicking about. I don't I think uncommon might be a bit of a push. Things could have changed since I was last, you know, where I was viewing these plants. But we could at least say rare if I was to do this in a rare plant index, right? I do think, however, I'm sorry guys, I still think they're iconic. And that's not me being hypocritical, because I've told you what I know. I just still think they're iconic. In terms of a hyped plant, I think when you come down to it and you look at the care of the variegated Monstera, you look at the, the resale value, if you wish to sell it as a private seller, you look at the the gorgeousness of it because the variegation is pure white and that's gorgeous. And I mentioned that in the last video, the whole plant is great. It's not too bad to propagate. If you're not a complete novice at propagation, there are ways to do it, no problem. It's good and it is iconic and it will stay that way for a while. So being true to myself and my opinions, I still think the variegated Monstera is iconic. And I think most people in most collections do strive to own one. And I think that's a fair place to put it. I think Yes Boy is too low. I think in maybe three years time, maybe less, I think we will We'll see it in this category. But for now, I'm leaving it there. Come what may, I'm leaving it there. Right then. Oh, should we dive into something a little bit? Okay, let's do it. I think I think we've been patient enough. So this plant here is what is known as the Alocasia Jacqueline. I don't know its proper name, and I will get to that in a moment. Now, before I go into this plant, I need you to fully be aware, and I'm saying it up front, the information I know about this plant is hazy. Now, I followed it when the controversy, because there was quite a bit, when this plant came out, I followed what I could of it, right? Because a lot of it was taken off Facebook groups because it was deemed to be um, like bullying and harassment and stuff like that. So I didn't get to see everything, right? I'm sure you can Google this, and this will be something I say quite a lot, but allegedly, right? I have to start using this term throughout this video because I feel like this is a YouTuber term that when you reach a certain point, you have to use. And I think we're reaching that point today. So what I know about this plant allegedly is the source of this plant here is poached. Maybe right, maybe wrong. Do not take what I'm saying as gospel. Please do your own research so you can totally throw out what I'm about to say. What I last knew of this plant as of six months ago was this plant was apparently poached. And the person that was selling this, who either had a first name or surname of Jacqueline, named this plant Alocasia Jacqueline. What actually happened was they'd pulled it from the wild. Allegedly. Now, you probably can't get a good... Um, view of this but it, it's basically it's supposed to look like that if you can see it it's got a funny shape and it looks a little bit like an alocasia zebrina reticulata sorry in terms of how like chlorotic can kind of look that's how the plant is so that that that's fine so what i know about this plant is it's got some really dodgy origins and i know for a while a lot of sellers were kind of vilified for selling it once it came out that it was poached and that was the origin of the plant like there was nothing being produced in a nursery or whatever now i believe the source of this came from indonesia allegedly and there's been a lot of argument in within Indonesian nurseries, of course, as to whether it has been poached or whether Indonesian nurseries have been just growing this out for a while and whatever else. There is there is much debate and I'm not going to comment on it because I'm not close enough to the source to know. Okay? If I don't know something, I'm not going to say that I do. So from what I know, there is there is controversy. I don't know what it's like in present day. Personally, I never see or hear of it. Personally. So I don't know if it just went into the dust and was forgotten. But there wasn't hype around this plant. There was just controversy from the get-go, which is kind of like the reverse of hype, right? Controversy is probably the reverse of hype when you think about it. Little known fact about me, I actually had one of these in the shop. I would have to check with Ben, but I believe it's dead. Essentially what happened was I was going to do a dish the dirt on this plant, but I felt like at the time there was no way of doing the series without 
possibly attacking an individual and I don't like to do that in my Dish the Dirt series. I like to attack a concept rather than an individual where I can help it. And this seemed to point back to a very specific source, so I, I didn't want to cover it. But I did look into it and I did have somebody send me one of these that they had purchased from whoever and they basically they didn't want it on their hands. So I kept it with me uh, for the sake of possibly doing a video. And of course, this would have all been explained to you. Um, basically, it didn't come off. So I either have one of these or they're dead. I'll put up on the screen right now, whether it's alive or not. If you want to see in the video, if it is alive, I will, have, of course, show you that if you want. It's definitely not got a leaf on it, though, because I haven't seen it. Uh, but at one point in time, I had one of these. Long-winded explanation. <laughs> but I would put it in here. I can't ignore the doubtfulness about the poaching and, and all of that sort of stuff. So take this whole entry with a pinch of salt, but I'm I'm gonna put it here for safety because I'm not about to say it's a solid choice if it's fucking poached, obviously. Um, I don't know how bad it is, for example. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna put it here. So let's do this one. This plant here is the philodendron strawberry shake, which I do believe, I hope I'm not wrong about this, is basically a philodendron red emerald variegata, so a variegated red emerald. Uh, the cool thing about this is, you can't see it on this photograph, but you get kind of like a variation between like a really light pink, and hence the name strawberry shake, and sometimes a yellowy creamy appearance, so it's kind of in between all three. Uh, again, this photograph isn't that representative, but what do I think about this plant? I've kind of said it before, so I'm gonna waste no time and put it here because although it is variegated, it can be very nice when grown mature, right? When the leaves are mature, they're very nice. You can probably see the shape here. It's a nice plant when it's grown mature. My issue with this plant is when it's juvenile, it grows like shit. And I know everyone knows that because I have seen when I was doing a little bit of research for this, the quality of the plant offered when you want to buy one of these plants, at least within the private seller market that I've noticed, is really bad. Um, my quality isn't much better in terms of maturity of the plant and how good they look. They kind of look like shit. They grow a little bit leggy like a pink princess and the variegation takes a while to fully like harden off. So it's a little bit polarized. It comes out a little bit dirty. Then over time it gets better. You need a lot more light than what you think you do. They're, they're Honestly, they're a bit of work. I'm not gonna lie, they're a bit of work. And I can say this because I sell them. I'm gonna keep it where it is because it's not a solid choice. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's a solid choice when it isn't. It's quite annoying for a plant, to be honest. So I'm gonna leave it here, because I think that's where it should be. So, oh, it's getting really bad. It's getting really bad. This here represents kind of two plants, if I'm honest. This represents the Musa, I can't remember how you pronounce it, I, I? maybe, or the Musa Florida. So a variegated banana, essentially. I used to own one of these, it rotted on me. Turns out these things are notorious for dying, rotting, crisping, you name it, really. It, they're, they're a nightmare. Now, are they a beautiful plant? Yes. Um, demand has gone right up for them. I don't know if demand went up for them before I kind of mentioned one on my channel. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not in the loop in that sense. But I think demand is still quite high for them and they're very pricey. Now, from what I've seen from photographs of nurseries, there are enough of them kind of, to go around. I just think they're they're very pricey. And I feel like people recognize the risk involved with these, hence they're not necessarily purchasing them. Unless that price comes down, I don't think people are gonna really be paying for them because honestly, it is high risk. Like I grow a lot of shit in my unit and I'm not saying I'm the best grower in the world because of course I'm not, but I can tell you from all the things I grow, this was the, one of the most difficult ones, which does play into what people say about the plant, right? I want to put it in iconic because it's a variegated banana and they are very beautiful to be in the presence off, but you need to understand I'm not not acknowledging what a bitch they are to look after. I'm really not. I understand these categories are a bit of a grey area anyway, but I'm going to put it in iconic because I think it is. A variegated banana is quite iconic. Next on my list is, I'm going to do this one, right? I've never really understood this one. I'm not going to lie to you. This is the philodendron cardinal, sorry, black cardinal variegated. Now, the thing I don't like about this is I've seen some nice pictures but they're very few and far between. I probably said this before on a video, but I feel like the variegation looks very dirty, like dishwater yellow. Like that's yellow variegation, but of course, because it's on black, you get like a really muddy yellow and I don't like it. I think I think we can do better than that. And I'm pretty sure these things have a ridiculous price tag. Last time I looked, they were maybe like 500 British pounds or $500 or whatever for a small one. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> Honestly, if you're a collector and you want to spend that money in these times, you know, go for it. But I, I, 
I'm not digging it. The growth pattern is fine. For me, it is purely down. It's not even down to the price. It's down to that dishwater variegation and I don't like it. Not knocking anyone that fucking has the plant. Not knocking anyone that likes it. For me personally, I don't think people want this. I don't want this. I'm going to put it here. It's not necessarily hyped, but it's also really not that good. So I think it should be here. Uh, okay, we're getting to some, some juice now. <laughs> Let's do... Mm, I'm going to do this one. I'm so nervous. I'm going to do this one. This here is known as two different things. So some people know this plant here as Monstera dilacerata. When I did a red plant index on Monstera, I referred to it as dilacerata. Nowadays, people are calling this Monstera, Monstera Burley Marks Flame. Now I do own one of these if you want to know where my bias stands. Um, this is hard, you know, because this plant, I want to say it's iconic. Now, unfortunately, I'm saying that as if I was like a year or two in the future, because I think this plant is going to become iconic for sure. And that is because for a type of Monstera, this uh, pattern of fenestration is so unique. And I understand why it's called Burley Marks Flame, because the fenestrations do appear very swirly and flame-like. I totally get it. The downside of this plant, I'm going to be straight up with you, it grows very slowly. So if you are thinking of investing in one, and as by the time this video goes out, I will have I had some on my website for sale, full transparency, um, they grow really slow. So cool and a great investment because they're definitely coming up on the market but and i can say this because i've already had the sale it's not biased but um they, they're coming up on the market but they are slow to grow so it, it it's kind of difficult to get them going but i feel like when you see plants like this they're absolutely amazing so for that i'm i'm gonna throw it here i'm gonna throw it in iconic because i feel like once this shit has run its course people are going to be looking to other things and i do think when the the value is right and this grows in more people's hands and you can get bigger plants that aren't as juvenile etc etc this will be a thing and I do think this plant is going to be a thing. I, it's just not this year because there's not enough mature specimens yet. It's still just being passed around nurseries and it's entering some high level collectors plants, right? It's it's not, it hasn't made that extra jump down yet that, for example, variegated Monstera has or McDowell has or even this Hoya has any, any of this. It hasn't dropped quite to that level yet. So I'm going to put it here, but it's kind of a future prediction. I think if I had to do it based on what it is right now, it's it's almost in here, but that's, that's going to be a thing. Um, you can see by the value of people buying and selling this, it's 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 becoming a thing. So I'm going to leave it there because I honestly truly believe it belongs there in the longer term. It just might not belong there today. All right. Okay. Oh, shit. So let's do... Hmm. <laughs> We're going to do something slightly dodgy. Okay. <sighs> So this plant here I got requests for, and I, I didn't know whether to cover it or not. I'm going to drop it in. This plant here, you probably can't see what it is. And I don't know how many people know about this plant. I didn't dare cover it at the time because it was a lot. But I'm going to cover it now because I think, honestly, a couple of things I'm going to talk about in this video, I feel like the tea is cold enough for me to talk about it without exacerbating anything or anything like that because I'm not about that. So this plant here, you may not be able to tell what it is. Because it looks like quite a young plant. I'll put a better image on the screen. Great having a green screen, is it not? This plant here is what is known as Philodendron Jerry Garcia. So this plant here, from my understanding and disclaimer, what I'm about to say is alleged and it is my understanding. I've tried to piece the best information I can from the internet collectively and to piece from what I knew about it at the time. I was following this plant's production from kind of the sidelines um, as it was being produced and, and distributed and, and all of the rest. So I, I know some stuff, but I had to make sure that I knew enough and I did look this up on the internet yesterday, as it happens. So if you want to know more of this plant, I think you should look for it on Reddit or something similar. I'm not going to cover the full thing. Again, I'm trying to leave the tea as cold as possible here because uh, I don't want to get burned by the tea. But 
This plant was produced by two people that I'm going to refer to them as just by their first names because it's there's a lot of reasons why, but I'm going to refer to them by their first names. So this plant was produced by two people known as Jerry and Eric. Essentially, what allegedly happened was these two individuals produced this plant. Now, the plant you see before you was said to be an offspring, so product from seed of Philodendron Spiritus Sancti crossed with Philodendron Jose. Bono. So Spiritus Sancti, a lot of people will know. I will put a picture here. And Jose Bono, a lot of us will know. Great plant. I will put a picture of here very briefly. So this plant was supposed to be a cross of both of these plants. There was a lot of skepticism around the time anyway that this was released. Understandably, not a lot was published to do with the process of producing these seeds, etc, etc. Probably due to the fact that the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti is rare as is. Not only that, but it, you've got to get a flower out of it. You've got to then pollinate successfully with another plant. From what I know about Philodendron Jose Bono, the only known specimens of the plant that are not produced by, you know, modern tissue culture, they have only been produced via cuttings. So that's the background on that plant. So this plant was met with a lot of excitement because it's, you know, a, a chance for everyone to own a piece of spiritus and a lot of skepticism because a lot of people were like, well, you know, it's showing a lot of Jose. How, how, do, how do you know what the, the parentage is? Can you give us more proof? Blah, blah, blah. The, the usual shit you find on the internet that was happening. So from my understanding and my rough knowledge, these plants were sold baby plants or seedlings, you would call them, probably the size of what you see here before you, maybe a little bit smaller. Plants such as these were sold for somewhere in the region of $1,000 to $3,000 per seedling. So per the size of the plant you see here. Now the thing is... <laughs> A guy, I'm only going to call him Aaron, because that I believe is his first name, a, a man uh, thought this was a little bit dubious and essentially wanted to know more, we'll just say, to shorten it down, wanted to have this plant tested. So, long story very short, I assure you, this plant was tested. I'll pop the results on the screen because green screen, but essentially the results concluded that the plants offered the Philodendron Jerry Garcia was showing no DNA that belonged to Philodendron Spiritus Sancti and the DNA found within that plant given for that given test was found to have only the DNA of a Philodendron Jose Bono, i.e. to conclude allegedly there was no Spiritus Sancti in this plant. As you can imagine, an entire internet meltdown ensued and this lasted for days. It it was it was a thing. It was a thing. So as with anything, I have to tell you there are two sides to every story. I think a statement may have been made by Eric, one of the co-producers of this plant, basically saying obviously the results produced were um, haploid leaves of Philodendron Jose Bono, which I believe means the plant is missing a set of chromosomes. So it does present slightly differently to a Jose, hence people bought into the fact that it may be a hybrid of Spiritus, right? So this guy Eric claims that, you know, it was obviously a mistake in the process, etc, etc. Something has gone wrong, which would be fine Except this isn't the first time that our boy Eric has made this mistake before. Now, the problem I have personally with this is this is not the first time Eric has made a mistake. His first mistake was to, I mean, he's made many, apparently, allegedly. He has stolen one or two plants from Botanic Gardens uh, that he has admitted to. That is not allegedly, that is fact. That that was a mess when that happened. There are a few videos on this, um, et cetera, et cetera, that you can probably find on YouTube. I know Pamela P has a great video on this where she shows you everything that went down and she talks about it. I'll link that down below actually. You can also find this on Reddit but essentially one of the guys involved with this plant uh, has been, he doesn't have a great rep. He's pissed off a lot of people, notably Tyler Thrasher as well. Great guy. He, he wasn't too happy with a couple of things that happened. I don't want to get into detail and again go and look it up. I'm just the messenger. So essentially there's been a lot of doubt as to whether allegedly this was a scam or this was an accident. I'm telling you what I can politically. One more thing before I continue. 
the account that this Eric person held under Instagram, where a lot of these uh, admissions were, it would appear to me from my own research that there is another account under that name that has obviously taken that name that is not that person. Don't send any hate to anybody I'm talking about in this video. You are not personally a friend of mine if you do that. But don't, don't do that because I think another person has taken that account over anyway. So do not send shitty messages to people. Don't do it anyway, but don't do it. You feel me? So obviously there are two camps. Camps that of people that think this was a scam, comes to people that think this was a mistake, this this was not good, internet meltdown, everything else. But this, let me tell you, this was hyped at the time. Again, equal skepticism, equal hype. This was a thing. I'm gonna go with my gut instinct. I'm gonna say anything, I'm just gonna move it to a category. And I think that communicates enough. I'm gonna move it here. You know what I'm saying without saying it, okay? I'm moving it here. I'm moving it here. I'm not about to piss off somebody that might have enough money to sue me. So I'm gonna put this plant here. It is my personal opinion. This plant should go in this category due to the alleged things that I've covered in this video. Moving right along. So let's go with something a little bit lighter. Here is the Anthurium Luxurians. Uh, full disclaimer, I sell these in the shop. Not often. I think I've sold about three ever. Um, I own one of these. I have one in my studio and they're great plants. Not the easiest plants in the world to take care of, but for a corrugated Anthurium, they're pretty good. I could be wrong about this, but I feel like this plant was like high value, then it dipped and then it's kind of steadily rolls back up again. I don't know if like there was a, a, a like a pool of supply and then it went, I don't know. I know the reasons for the hype. I can tell you that it's a gorgeous plant. Um, I featured it on my channel several times, that's no secret. I like the plant. I think it's a great plant. The hype, and I don't feel like there's a lot of hype for this, mainly because it's Anthurium. And honestly guys, Anthurium's just on hype like Monster and Philodendron are, probably because they're known for being more difficult. I'm going to put it in iconic and that is for the following reasons. So I think that for a bougie Anthurium, it's great. I do think it holds its own. I think there is nothing like it and I think it's very striking. The price tag is worth it and it's justified. And if I don't think something is justified, I will tell you. Straight up, I will tell you. It doesn't matter whether I'm selling it or not, I will tell you. I think that's is justified. I don't see many of these about. I myself have maybe two. God's honest, I have two. I think I might have a couple in chunks that haven't sprouted yet, but I have two plants and one of them is mine. So I think it's justified. I don't see it often. And when I do see it, there is a price tag. If you can find it for cheap, great, go for it, cool. I think as far as a bougie Anthurium goes, this is the category it belongs in. So I'm going to put it in there. I think that's fair. I'm going to rank these in order at the end, by the way, I'll just do it kind of later on because I've I've just remembered now that I'm supposed to be doing that so I've forgotten. I will rank these within the categories at the end but I'll just keep going for now. So the next plan we're going to cover is this one. This is the Philodendron Golden Dragon Variegade. Now then, I have a clear bias here. I don't own this plant. I've never owned this plant. I've owned the green version and I regret giving it away and I think I've mentioned that in a video before. The green plant for me is absolutely stunning. I love it. It's got whiskers. It's, it's, just, it's just the best, honestly. So I love this plant. I don't know if it's enough to put it in iconic though. Full disclosure, this is actually a wish list plant for me. I would love to acquire this plant. I hope to acquire this plant. One day I will get this plant and I will hopefully be able to provide this plant. I do know that it is not very stable. I've actually been warned off it by a few suppliers because it is not stable. Regardless of whether I could afford it or not, that wasn't the issue. It was like, yo, I must warn you, this is this is not performing well for me, which I really appreciate by the way. Thank you. Um, so I already know that. And that could be why, again, this plant is not circulated much. They're just not very stable. They're a little bit like Florida Beauty, only on steroids, I would say. If you're gonna compare it to a plant that already exists, I would compare it to the Florida Beauty. It's, <laughs> it's not ideal. So I don't wanna call it iconic. It's not well known enough. It's not stable enough. It's not solid enough. Is it absolutely stunning? Oh, yes, of course it is. It's beautiful. For me, it's not quite enough. And this is me saying it genuinely as somebody that has it on their wish list. And it's a plant that I want. But I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh yes, definitely. Like, even though this plant is a nightmare here, this variegated Musa, it's still quite iconic. A lot of people keep these, they swear by them, they love them even though they're difficult, they're worth it, etc, etc. So for that reason, I feel like that earns the place. This just isn't there yet. And I have to be honest, that's the, all these videos about being honest, right? I'm going to leave that where it is because I think that's where it should be. Let's go with this one. This here is the small form Monstera Aurea. So Monstera Borzigiana, 
yellow variegated is essentially what I'm talking about. For me, this... Eek, that's fucking difficult, you know. Because my instinct here... I'll talk you through what I'm thinking. My instinct here is to put it there. And I think if I put it there, I am doing so ahead of its time. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Because this is iconic and everyone wants this. Because this is yellow variegation... I mean, I've done videos on this and I, I read your guys' comments. Not everyone's here with the yellow yet. A lot of people are like, no, I, I want the white variegation. Yellow is just like not a thing for me. The plant looks ill, whatever, whatever. Um, so I don't think it's there yet. I think it will eventually when yellow comes more into play. Not a lot of plants with yellow variegation really make it through. You've got things like Philodendron Florida Beauty, great. Um, sometimes that can look yellow, sometimes that can look cream though. Domestic and Barigata, that's another one that's great, that's variegated. There are a few, but... I feel like it's not quite there yet, but I'm trying to come to a balance between what I think and what the world thinks for this to give you like some frame of reference so it's not like a useless video. Um, for me, I'm just going to be honest, for me it's here. I do love the plant. I actually have a large form of this, which probably would go in there or it would probably go in there, full disclosure. It would probably go in there. But for now, I'm going to leave it here because although they, they sell for a lot, they're very collectible, don't get me wrong, but it is more of a collector's item rather than like a mainstream hyped whatever thing. So I love the plant, but I'm going to recognize that all the people aren't there yet. And that's where I'm putting it. Oh, shit. So when I said y'all want to get me in trouble, this is kind of what I'm talking about. <laughs> this here... I avoided it in the last video, but this here is the very... No, it's not. You wish. This here is the mint Adansonii. Adansonii mint variegated. Adansonii mint. Adansonii fucking mint marble. What? Insert the name here. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to blanket talk about, for the most part, I'm going to talk about both the two forms that people talk about. One seems to be the Indonesian form that certain people have chose to say that it is not stable and it's different and everything else. And the other form is the EU stable form. Now, my opinion actually applies to both plants. I have featured this plant again in another video um, where I gave my opinion on it, which again is my opinion. I am going to talk about them both in a blanket sense. And when I'm not talking about them both in a blanket sense, I will let you know. Right. This plant right here, the facts, the facts, the facts are as follows. This plant here, there is internet debate among the general collective of the internet as to whether this plant is viral or not viral. That is a fact. Personal opinion, I see this plant and I don't think it looks quite right. I've said this before. I'm just repeating what I've said before in a previous video. I don't think this plant looks right. More often than not, leaves look a little bit malformed. It doesn't look anything like a healthy plant. I don't often see plants where the leaves are like nice big wide paddles, as you would see on something that's normally variegated or something that's all green. They're always just a little bit iffy, right? It just, it's, it's not quite right. Now I have reasons to further believe personally that these plants are viral. I will go into them in just a second. I'm going to get specific here. I have had no experience with the Indonesian form that is going around. I really don't. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't have experience. I'm not going to profess to know something that I don't. To me, it doesn't look right. Personal opinion, moving on. I do have limited experience, not hands-on physical you know, experience looking at the plant in real life, but I do have some experience in dealing with the Monstera Adansonii Mint EU stable form. This is just like, insert what you think I'm going to say here. I don't know what this is. This is just fill in the blank, I guess you could say. What I can tell you as fact is that the parties responsible for the Indonesian stable form of this plant have told, well, not technically me, they've told Ben, that they are unwilling to test this plant against viruses. The reason given for that is because they're selling so well and they are in high demand. Well, of course you're going to say that because you're making several thousand per plant. Why would you risk testing it? Again, that is my personal opinion. Again, this, this isn't made up. 
here it is. This is this is a thing that happened. Okay. I don't want to drone on about this plant because I've expressed my feelings on this plant in the documentary. I know that's why you put the plant in this list. I know that's what you want to hear. But again, I've expressed my opinions in the documentary. Now, the only issue I have with it is that the main source leaking this plant did something really shitty a while ago. And I think I will put it on record because it's easier than me going back over it with anything else. So the parties responsible for this plant did a very shitty thing. And they essentially took a screenshot of a moment where Ben was inquiring as to essentially the perceived value that this individual selling this plant had put on this plant. The reason being for that is very, very well documented. Essentially, if you haven't seen my documentary about the rare plant shop, it's cool. Really watch it. I'll link it below. But there's a moment in the documentary where we were going to be bidding on a philodendron ilmanii, a rare plant. Coincidentally, is, is next up in this list. On the day of the auction or the day before, I'm pretty sure it's the day of the auction, I had been inquirers to how much the plant would be if they were to sell it to us. Now, this was a little bit of a slippery trick. This was essentially myself and Ben trying to work out the perceived value the seller put on this plant because it was part of a best offer auction. So if you don't know how that works, there was an Ilmanii up for best offer auction, which means you can either offer cash, a plant, or cash and a plant to in order to win this plant, right? And it was up to the seller's discretion as to what they chose. So we were trying to ascertain the value put on that. Long story very short, don't want to drone on about it, but I feel like it's important to get it out there because that's the first thing that these people are going to come back at me with. This person decided to crop down this snippet of conversation where we inquired as to the price and actually use that as a sales testimony to testify that this plan was good to go when people came at the seller with doubts that it was viral. They used Ben's testimony as actual testimony. Again, this can be viewed on my Instagram. It's there. I've pinned it for this very reason because I feel like if I don't pin it, someone is going to continuously bite me in the ass. But essentially, that's what happened. The individuals that are responsible for the distribution of this plan have constantly claimed that it's because I can't afford it or some shit like that. I don't know. And that, that's why I continue to trash the plan. I trash the plan because, in my opinion, it is viral and I have not received any proof that it is not viral. And to my knowledge, no one has tested it. So my personal opinion on this plant is that I personally believe it is viral. I personally would not touch it. I urge other people to do your research, do your tests and understand that if this plant is to be viral, you have thrown away some money. If it's not viral, congratulations, great purchase. If it is, it's worth nothing. Same thing I said before. But listen, seriously, one closing word on this plant. Even if it's not viral, both EU stable form and the Indonesian marble form, even if it's not viral, it still looks ugly as shit. You better off with the variegated Ansonii, you better off with variegated anything, uh, anything else that's mint. I mean, I have a, I have a bias to anything mint anyway, but seriously, you better off with anything else. So that's my personal opinion. Do we like? Moving on. Okay, so that does take us nicely on to the philodendron Ilmanii. Potential bias here. I obviously won that plant at that auction that I just spoke about. So I think the plant is great. This plant has a really fun history, a history I'd love to share with you at some point soon. Essentially, this plant used to be really common in like, I don't know if it was like the 1970s or 80s or something. And I don't know if it just people just stopped caring and it just stopped being in people's houses. Shit like that, really. But it became like super rare and it has become a unicorn. Um, if you're wondering why there is hype, it is because there are not many of these and they are considered unicorns and the variegation does seem from what I can gather reasonably stable it's certainly not as bad as like a Florida Beauty or a, a Golden Dragon or whatever um, it seems to be pretty good anyway they're good plants and I'm gonna say it's iconic because this plant was very common back in its day I can prove that quite easily. I think I've got a screenshot of a really old house plan book that I've been meaning to share with you guys. And if you want to see more of this book, by the way, let me know because it could be quite an interesting read. Obviously, I'll sit in front of a green screen. I'll read this book for you and show you like some of the shit in there because it's actually mad. But this plan was featured in that, which tells me that this was a thing. 
a lot of years ago. So for that reason, I'm going to, I think it deserves iconic status. It's not quite sexually attracted, but it's, it's seriously iconic. It's borderline sexually attracted because if you know anything about the shape of these leaves, because I don't know how many people do, because the majority of the time when cuttings are traded on the internet, they're quite juvenile. But these leaves have a really interesting, really unique coffin shape to them. And I don't think I've seen that in any other philodendron. So they are quite unique to boot as well as the variegation and, and everything else. So for me, they're definitely iconic. So we now have, this is a this is an interesting picture actually. I'm gonna pop it here just to save um, moving too far along the screen. This is the philodendron mottled whip away. And I will make no secret of telling you this is on my wish list. And it is beautiful. If you've ever seen this plant. Now, a few people commented this in my suggestions and they were like, yo, I, I don't get it. Basically this plant emerges a really nice, like a strawberry milkshake color, like a really baby pink color. Then it fades into like a, a, a creamy white and then eventually it can go to green. The cool thing about this plant is a lot of the time, the leaves that have turned, you know, creamy white, they stay there a lot longer than the leaves of say a Florida ghost. Like it's a lot longer lasting. And the variegation is is honestly quite close to this plant here, the Philodendron ilmanii. It does have little flecks in it, hence it's called mottled whippleway. It's not necessarily solid. There are tiny little strokes of green running through it. And for that reason, it's quite similar to Ilmanii, Manii, but it has these other colors that it goes through. So it's a little bit more special than a ghost in that it goes through a beautiful baby pink stage. And I'm just gonna be honest with you, I think it's fucking awesome. Am I sexually attracted? I feel like that category is so reserved for like the best of the best. I'm not going to say that I am sexually attracted to it. Uh, I'm going to leave it where it is an iconic because this is going to be a thing. I've seen these sell on the internet for stupid money. Um, I, I know of a one that recently sold for about $13,000. These are the tits. And looking at that spread, that's quite interesting that nothing made it into this category past the spiritus. Now we've done that, I'm going to reorder them super, super fast. Oh my God, did I not actually put this in a category? How did this escape my attention? I'm very sorry. This is in this category if I didn't make this abundantly obvious. My apologies. You must have just sat there watching me leave that going, why hasn't she moved it? It belongs here. It belongs here. So that was another episode of Houseplants Ranked. Now, second to this, when I offered this topic up for discussion on my Instagram, the common suggestion for houseplants was no next. I will be doing that, so you can expect that real soon. Again, I will leave a request open on my Instagram for you to drop in common plants. Also, closer to Halloween, I will be ranking some goth plants for you guys, and I will probably leave that open to suggestion as well. I do have a list of my own, but I will leave that open to suggestion for some submissions last minute. Please remember that this is an opinion piece, so take from it what you will. I hope you found it entertaining and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you want to be more involved with stuff like this, you can leave a comment on this video or you can go to my Instagram whenever I feature question boxes for these episodes. If you're unsure of what to do, just leave a comment down below and I will be sure to take a look at it. Until then, thank you very much for watching this episode and I'm sure to see you in the next one. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it's videos of this nature or of any other kind of houseplant video, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That's it for this week's video, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.